All I got is missed calls on my line. Yeah, What's up, never... everybody? Welcome into episode 154 of the Miss Call Podcast. I am Ryan Sartori, and that next to me is Colby Marcio. We are Colby. not well known enough for you to start switching up names and shit. That's Colby. I'm Ryan, and this episode is definitely going to be called Cubs Drug Rug. This is a poncho. It is officially poncho season, boys. Let's get cozy. Let's get comfy. I got this for $20 in San Antonio. At a, tell me, at a flea tell market? Me tell me this isn't glorious. I thought this was going to be like $60. I don't know who started poncho season and why you think it's right before Christmas. I invented it yesterday. Okay. That is the most Colby thing you could do is just, I'm going to start a thing and like think that it's always been a thing. No matter what anybody says, poncho season. You can't tell me it's not a thing. Who doesn't know about poncho season? <laughs> you haven't that, heard? That, yeah, that this, this is, is. This is my Festivus. This is my Festivus. <laughs> that is Colby Marcio. That's the essence of you is just making shit up and being like, you didn't know about this? You idiot. You're not keep, if you're not you're not making up stuff, you're not keeping the mind moving. And then gaslighting people into believing it's always been a thing, then you are not being Cub Marchio. Anyway. I, I, sent, I sent you a card last year for Poncho season. I got lost in the mail. I was moving different residencies. It happens. It works out. See, it works out. Uh, we got a lot to get into today, dude. Uh, we were talking college football playoffs. We're going to have a long conversation about that. And the Heisman finalists just announced as we were getting ready to hit record. Uh, plus we did a couple of weeks ago, a listing of the NFL teams into categories that made sense to us, but may not make sense to anyone else. Uh, we're going That's to fine. readjust and recalibrate where those teams should be in those exact categories once more. And, the hot stove is hot. MLB is uh, at the winter meetings right now, and we're expecting some pretty big signings. So we're going to talk about the beginnings of that and a whole bunch more, too. Before we jump into any of that, Cub, I kind of want to address where we've been for two weeks because it's not been from a point of negligence that we haven't been recording episodes. Um, oh, I thought it was because we hated each other. No, and it hasn't even oh. been because we were lazy. We text each other each Monday and we're like, Hey, yeah, probably not today. And mostly for this reason. So I rent this, this trailer. We've talked about the trailer before and the, the thing that I rent. Um, and, and, and for two weeks, my girlfriend and I uh, experienced some like major electrical issues where like we couldn't have the, a, a light bulb and the microwave on at the same time or we couldn't have like two light bulbs and a fan running and if the furnace kicked on the entire fucking house would shut off we went through that for two weeks left for thanksgiving uh came back the saturday after thanksgiving and our furnace had shit out oh that sunday night <laughs> it was zero degrees you guys were snuggling in a rug, weren't you? The Sunday after Thanksgiving, overnight low was zero degrees. We were staying with a friend, thank God. But the 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 furnace wasn't fixed until I, I believe I believe Tuesday was the day that it actually got fixed. And then there was more. And then here's the fun part. Remember, it was zero degrees, and then Making it was notes. 40 degrees all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And what happened was the inside of this trailer got frozen. So when everything dethawed, it, much like a beer bottle or can or whatever, sweat like it was a hot summer day, except all that condensation was inside my house. Like I'm explaining this, and I'm sure – Nobody's going to be accurately able to picture what exactly I walked into Wednesday after work last week, because when I showed up, the furnace repair guy showed up three minutes after me and asked, is your house on fire? That's how much condensation was pouring out of this house. <laughs> and then, and then the most fun was that the furnace guy went ahead and fixed the furnace while watching me the entire time just look around and be like, 
what am I going to do? Did it just Where look do like I sweat? even start? Did it look like yeah. Sweat? Oh. Cub, there was water everywhere on the ceilings, on the floors, on the on, on the book, on the table, uh, it, on the glass, inside the cabinet, on the cabinet. It was everywhere. It was on the furnace. It condensed on the furnace. And so the furnace repair guy was like, hey, man, I'm going to fix this, but don't start this thing for at least a couple of hours with a fan running directly on it. It has to be bone dry. And the only thing that's going to help the water disappear <laughs> inside this damn trailer is the furnace. So it was, dude, it was the craziest shit that I've been a part of. Um, no doubt. And so that's where we've been. I haven't had good enough Wi-Fi. That was the original. One week. And then the other week was I can't enter the residence that I pay for because it's too damn cold in there. Mm -hmm. And then. We had to basically act like LDR and like clean out the entire inside and run fans. And dude, it, it's been wild bonkers crazy the past couple of weeks. You know, this story is going to be absolutely amazing in about 35, 40 years when you're a grandfather and yeah. you're telling your grandkids, you know, back in my day, <laughs> I didn't have Wi Fi, the furnace didn't work. And my walls were sweating. And but you can't dude, go to school? <laughs> dude, when I moved into this place, my dad looked at me. He goes, I can't wait for your kids to be old enough for you to start pelting them with the, I, well, your mother and I started in a trailer, so you'll be fine. You know what I mean? Like, just throwing it's it in their faces like, yeah, you think your life's bad? I lived in a fucking trailer, and I didn't even own it. I rented that bitch. We're all millennials. Like, we're all struggling, so we're all going to have great stories. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. And adapt into, like, you know, a world that's quite literally every day changing around us. We don't know what's going on. So that's oh, where but, we've been. But get married, get married, buy a house, buy a car. You know, let me get right on that. I'm, yeah, I'm all over that, Grandpa. Uh, that's where we've been. This is why we're back. Um, and I, if, if it's all right, if it pleases the court, I have one additional thing to get off my chest uh, before we talk about the college football playoff. Continue. It's a bit that I've been continuing for the entirety of this fantasy football season, um, and it might be impacting a friendship right now. So, Pardon, what are you, Jock Peterson? <laughs> Tommy Fam. So, I, 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 I'm in a dynasty league with with some with some close friends. Can I just uh, interrupt you real quick? Ryan yeah. calls me about every six months asking for advice. In in, in <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> well, because here's the here's the issue I've run into. My number one fantasy confidant is also the commissioner of this league. And we are both two teams in a window of winning. Mm -hmm. And so it ends up that like, I, I can't run everything past him because then he knows inside strategy. So um, it's actually this exact friend that I'm talking about. So I have had a bit going for a long time, but more specifically in fantasy football of when I've got a big matchup, I don't talk to that person for the course of the week. You're just really invested in fantasy. That's fine. No, I mean, like, I want, I'm trying to rile the guys up. I'm trying to, inst you know, instill some, some really deep feelings from the guys who are on my roster. I mean, I know that we don't know each other personally, but it has to resonate with them that somewhere out there, a fantasy owner of theirs is really making sure that we have a culture of about us versus them. Uh, you know, it's, it's try that on a fourth down versus the world. And, um, okay. I got a text from a, th this this friend during the course of the week that was very heartfelt. It was very nice. I didn't respond to it because I'm invested in this bit. And I and I hope that tonight when Monday Night Football is over and I respond to all the things that he sent me over the course of the week, that he is okay with where we're at. Because I told him, hey, I, before, before we even went into Thursday Night Football of week 13, I texted him. I said, I enjoy your friendship. But it's it's Jack week, and I can't talk to you until this week is over. 
Not Jack. Yeah, it's Jack. Oh, that poor bastard. Yeah. Well, you know what? He deserves it because he's whooping my ass right now. Well, it sounds like you deserve it. I need a big Travis ETN night is what I need. Oh, I have my fantasy too. ETN for like 25 and then Mixon and Ingram can't combine for more than like five points or 10 points and I'll sh- I should be okay. No one cares about your fantasy team. No, I know. And this is actually like when Just you start FYI. talking about like personal fantasy stuff and like, I need this, I need that. Truthfully, my brain turns out when people start talking to me about theirs. So, you know, I forget let's... it's a, I forget it's a thing because I'm so invested in gambling on a daily basis that when I hear somebody say, oh, I have them in fantasy, I go, what? Yeah. I go, what? I go, I have him to get over three and a half attempts. That's what I got. By the way, cashed my first parlay in a long time last night. <laughs> I called unit. it the I called it the get me even parlay because it covered everything that I bet yesterday. That I went should to be get you right. Football. Get you right. No, 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 no. Uh, the, get, the, get me even. The get me even on the day parlay. It stunk like cheese because every part of the every part of the fucking parlay was about uh, the Packers. I had Jordan Love over passing. I knew they would cover. I Watson knew they would over cover. receptions. I had the Packers over on total points and the Green Bay spread too. I, I didn't put much down. I didn't win much, but it, you know it got me even on the day. The even on the day parlay. Uh, for those that know, I too miss the silly goose parlays every single day. For the fans out there. C underscore Marcio two on Twitter. Yeah, silly goose parlays every summer. It's a it, it is a great time. All right, not a great time. Not having fun right now is Florida State, also Georgia, uh, because they are on the outside looking in of the college football playoffs. Uh, we 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 have the picture. We know that Michigan is playing Alabama, and we have Washington playing Texas on the two opposite sides of the bracket for the college football playoff. We got that yesterday, and the world of sports has been in a tailspin because of it ever since. Yeah, I had a glass of wine before this, so I'm loose and ready to go. I'm drinking um, High Lives right now, ready to go, dog. Let's do it. Um, so I think it's also very weird that I only know a couple people, and they're in my life, that are on my side of this. And the rest of the world just doesn't understand. The media also wants to be on this side as well. That is the side of FSU should have made the playoffs. Incorrect. Incorrect. Now, Ryan, before we started recording, I was talking to my father, who is the one who has raised me into being a college football sicko and college football sport sicko. And I asked him, I go, Keep in mind, my dad hasn't watched a single game of sports in 10 years, so he knows nothing. So it's it's unbiased, and it's a simple question. I said, what is the most important thing in college football? And he thought I was going to say something other than what he was going to say, and I go, strength of schedule. And he goes, that's what I was going to say. And I go, that is the most important thing for a college football team to do. Just, oh, oh, oh you beat 12 teams that are poop? Crap? No, because we make fun of Notre Dame every single season because their strength of schedule is horrendous. Yeah. And and I'm just – I'm sick. I, I would I would love to, like, scroll through Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, and see somebody with a different side of why FSU should have made it instead of the games don't matter, Dan, well, if you don't put them in. Before, before we get, like, super deep into it, like – we're both on the same side of this. We both which, think which FSU, I, I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad so we can give more out. Yeah, I, I think FSU probably should have been left out of the playoffs. And now I didn't watch a ton of FSU even when Jordan, Jordan Travis was healthy. But yeah, here's what happens by leaving them out. Even though I think they should be on the outside looking in, um, here's what happens when you do that. To some extent, you devalue wins and you devalue, uh, uh, I, I think, the, the, the conference championship, right? It also, in some ways, 
devalues uh, the the scheduling that FSU had put together for their but these season. These teams are also making their schedule, which side note I think is ridiculous. Yeah, I I think it is too. Be, well, I and I don't know what the what the 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 conference schedule looks like and how the the teams go about that. There should be some sort of mediator in that regard. Yeah, the non-conference like, okay, they schedule. Yeah, well, the non-conference like that's just the way it is, unfortunately. And if you so allow you the NC, if well, if you allow the NCAA to put their hands on it, then there's even more speculation about what's actually happening there. But like, yeah. okay. Let's look. I'm actually going to move my computer. I set it up far away. Now I needed to bring it close because I need to look something up. So this is not great for the viewers out there, but for everybody else, whatever. So Florida State, uh, they're, they're scheduled this year, right? Because we know the ACC isn't the same. Well, I can tell type. you who they beat. I can tell you who they beat. They the, Their notable wins are LSU week one, LSU – we have learned has the worst defense in college football outside of, I don't know, maybe Colorado or USC. Sure. Um, they beat Duke when they were ranked. Duke was not a terrible team, but until the end after uh, Riley Leonard got injured, and didn't, couldn't stay healthy, they weren't good. They beat a unranked Clemson team. Yeah. Clemson has a horrendous offense. Terrific. You beat them and a ranked Louisville team in the ACC championship. Okay. Now – this and you also report, beat Florida. Florida, Florida's Florida uh, sucks. Florida sucks. Yeah, I do but, not, but it is I an do, SEC I, opponent, and it depends I, how I, heavy you want to weigh that. I don't care that you beat him in the swamp at night. It is sure it is tough to win at the swamp at night, but I don't care because that team sucks. And their head coach Billy Napier is going to get fired. He's a terrible coach. The team sucks. But for the most part. Their schedule didn't do much for them, uh, but 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 we also have to look at it and say they beat a ranked LSU. Uh, they did beat a ranked Duke, who we later found out later was just you know poop. Clemson was poop this year, so maybe maybe you're talking strength of schedule, but even still, they I think they beat two SEC opponents, which a lot of ACC schools wouldn't be able to do just based off of talent. Um, so that's what it does do. That's what it does automatically is it is it lessens the impact of those things for future decisions. At least it should because that's what the committee showed us this year. I think what a lot of people are upset with is a lack of continuity. I think maybe that's where Florida State fans start to get angry about things because in the past, an undefeated Power 5 conference champion would always get into the top four and have an opportunity to bang on their chest a little bit. But I mean, uh, like not the same team. I don't care. Joshua Perry made a very, very good point to me. When did today. Jordan we Travis talking, go down? I think two or three weeks ago. Sorry, I'm burping. Go ahead. Um, Joshua Perry played on the national championship Ohio State team in 2015, 16, whatever it is, with uh, Ezekiel Elliott. And he goes, We had our third string quarterback in. And he goes, I hate that people are comparing this Florida state team to our Ohio state national championship team, because Melvin Gordon went off for a ton of yards the week before, like the week before they played Wisconsin. And then he goes, we held him to under a hundred yards. That is the difference between Ohio state then in FSU. Now, like yeah. sure you were winning with your backup quarterback, but you will, we all know you were going to be the weakest link. If you got in, just based before any games are played, that would have been the weakest league because they did not have Jordan Travis. And also, I don't think that's a bad thing for the committee to to weigh, because also this is the, the Alabama team that made it is a completely different team than the one that Texas beat in the in the first few weeks at Tuscaloosa because Jalen Milrow got benched, and now Jalen Milrow is a absolute threat and a lethal football player yeah we it's it's and it's been cool to see J the the actual progression and growth of a quarterback throughout the course he might of be the stiffest quarterback i've ever seen but he sure is athletic as hell yeah he's 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 tebow that throws right-handed he's tebow that throws <laughs> okay that's what they're comparing him to fair enough and i i also think it's wild for people than like like the progress over time i think you have to weigh that as well because if you look at Alabama at the beginning of the season, we I was saying they suck. 
And then the progression they've made ever since that loss to Texas is what good teams do. Yeah. And now I have them winning it all. They are going to embarrass Michigan. Here's something that I've always been curious about college football and fans. And you watch more than I. But does it at all ever make you angry that like we nitpick wins? I guess when you ha- when you're whittling it down to it's four teams, it's because there's so many, there's so few games. But I, you but I also guess to. when you're trying to whittle it down to a, a top four teams, and there's usually a bunch of very good teams that you kind of have to. But like I've heard a lot of people nitpicking the Alabama win over Auburn, and Auburn was not a good team this year. No, they lost to New Mexico State the week prior. Sometimes you just end up in a situation where. Again, it's an any given any given Saturday type of situation where anybody can beat anybody. That's why we that's why we love college football, right? But when you end up in those situations and you still find a way to win and be, be resilient, I think that there's something to be said about that. I, I think that there's there's a weight that we don't necessarily uh, give to those wins and count resiliency as as something. Of, of value when when evaluating these teams on who should make the final four. I thought as soon as Alabama beat Georgia on Saturday that Alabama was going to get a spot. I didn't think Georgia was going to I fall said they all win the, the way red. down. I to, said that all last week. I didn't think Georgia was going to fall all the way down to six. That was the craziest oh, yeah. part. Is I that, thought that, they would still let I thought they would still let Georgia ride in the top four with maybe Georgia going to three and Alabama coming to four and then maybe seeing a rematch in, in the, uh, in the, 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 is- the championship game. But there was, there was conversation that an SEC team shouldn't have even made it into the final four. This is a great example of what I'm trying to tell the, trying to say is the reason why Georgia didn't even get considered to be made in is because their schedule sucked. So before they are, they were four and eight. They're four and nine this season against the spread. Mm. And not covering the spread is a prime example of you underplaying and not over, like you're not meeting expectations. So you're just coasting. Georgia is a great team. They're a great SEC, SEC team. They coasted through the whole season. And not to backtrack too far, but when you mentioned the Auburn game, remember you asked me like the mindset of like gambling and stuff, and it makes no sense sometimes. Yeah. Alabama was in a look ahead spot. They were like, they don't want to show too much tape for Georgia against Auburn. They had their foot way off the gas. Yeah. They, they probably shouldn't have won. They had their foot way off the gas and should not have scored on that fourth down, fourth and 30 on the goal. Um, that's just a major look ahead spot. I had at Auburn in that game. I had the spread. So, but you also spot. look too. I'm looking, I'm just, you know, just as you're talking, I'm, I'm just kind of refreshing my brain. Georgia who was then ranked sixth earlier this year, only beat Auburn by a touchdown. They, like I said, they coasted. They played no, they had yeah. the, the cupcake schedule. The yeah. Cupcake I mean, schedule. they, 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 they played a tough Missouri team. They, they whooped a, a tough Mississippi team. Uh, they, frauds. they skated past Tennessee. They only beat South Carolina by 10 Spencer Rattler at command. It's like they weren't, I guess Future maybe bear. they weren't that special. Huh? Future bear. <laughs> Future bear Spencer Rattler. Yeah. But like, I don't know. You're, I, I think, I think you're right. I think Georgia did, and, did, did cakewalk it a little bit, which is super crazy because I don't think Kirby smarts that guy. I don't think he's that guy to let that complacency leak into his locker room. I also wasn't super like, People talked about the progression of Carson Beck this year. I didn't see it. Did you see it? He didn't wow me. He didn't wow no, me. No, no. Nobody wowed neither, me. To be fair with you, neither did – Um, why can't I think no, of their last quarterback? Oh, Stetson Bennett. Why? Neither did Stetson Bennett. Like, Stetson didn't impress He's vanilla. me either. He's vanilla. Yeah, but, I mean, with, with as much as, as Carson had around him, he should have been able to do – Something now t- I was, I guess maybe, maybe more so than anything is that I was shocked that they didn't give Georgia at least an opportunity to go for the three Pete, because that would have been the biggest storyline at this point. Now 
It's all about Alabama. And it's super funny that now they're the underdog. Which I love. It's hilarious. Um, I just think uh, it's just that's another reason why Alabama should be in. Talk of like resume. They have the biggest win in college football this season. They knocked off the two-time defending champion yeah. Georgia Bulldogs. What other team in the top four can say they beat the number one undefeated at the time team in the country? Nobody. And also another reason why uh, Alabama should be in the college football playoffs is based off of how Michigan reacted to knowing they're going to have to play them. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a video of Michigan in a meeting room or whatever, seeing yeah. who they pull up for the fourth spot. And Michigan reacted this way. And I'm not over-exaggerating. This is the exact reaction. Alabama. Oh! Yeah. It was like they hit a fucking whammy. In- <laughs> when they hit... Oh! They, 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 they spun the wheel and Wheel of Fortune and hit the bankrupt tile. And you know how they have that... That was the sound that overtook that room. It, it, it was a, a crowd when they thought it was a home run, but it was a routine pop fly. Ah, oh, good job, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, th- listen, if you were Michigan, would you want to play Alabama right now? In, uh, Nick Saban as a dog? Yeah. I have he, already bet Alabama money line. I have already bet. Rat poison, baby, because he's... Now, he, now the, best, the, the best way... To, the best way to compare that video of Michigan is LeBron James at the foul line looking back and seeing Kawhi Leonard's coming in. That is Alabama. Speaking speaking of LeBron, did you see him and uh, Ime get into it the other night? Ime, get lost, dude. I was all for it. I, I, I'm tired of watching players. Shut the hell up. I'm tired of watching players bitch and moan over everything. Anyway. Uh, but, but, <laughs> I, especially in the basketball realm anyway, but uh, college football, the playoffs, it's going to be something that we talk about, I guess, for, for the rest of the year. I've seen people on social media going as far as like finger pointing to certain media members talking about how they had an agenda to have Florida state ousted from the time Jordan Travis went down with his injury against North Alabama. I've seen so many different things at the end of the day, we can have discourse about it. But to go as far as being like there are bad actors and people who are actively betting against football programs, I, or I guess I guess uh, um, not betting against, but like conspiring against. I don't think I, you can never put it past anything with the NCAA, but I don't think that was the case here. I think that the correct decision was made. Uh, it's not the same team. You would essentially be putting. Florida State in that situation, you would essentially be putting in a a two and O team, or a two and a half and O team, right? Um, and and I, Jordan Travis, with a very bleak message on so, social media, probably said it best, where he said, "I wish I would have broke my leg sooner." Oh my god! And as morbid as that is, and as also as sad as that is, right from the human aspect, he probably has a point. He probably has a point that if he would have broken his leg earlier in the season and his backup has the opportunity to come in and and and, and do the things necessary to prove that Florida State belonged in there, even with a backup quarterback, they probably end up in a situation where if they did and all the cards fell the same way, where they go 12-0 and 0 and they win the ACC championship, they're probably in a situation where they wind up in the college football playoffs. Maybe he did need to break it sooner. I mean, that's again, extremely morbid and I don't wish that upon him, but yeah, that's just a huge. What if, and it it is, but, but again, we're, we're, that's what we're doing. We're working through this whole thing and trying to figure it out. But, um, it, I'm excited for the matchups we have in front of us because I think it would have been a different story. If That's you another gave us, thing. That's another it been, great example. It would have been a different story if you gave us Alabama, Washington, and Texas, Michigan, because I think that would have been two early games. You're like, ah. I think we got two very evenly matched up teams. And if Jaden uh, Milrow 
comes out and plays the Jaylen, way that yeah, Jalen, Jalen. I said Jaden. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we know how I love to do that. Um, if he comes out and, and and plays the way he has been, they could take down Michigan easy peasy. I, that's another that's another great point to bring up. I think the committee has never done it, but this is the best decision they've ever made. Yeah, because we talked about in years past, the fourth team is usually the weakest link. And remember that Oklahoma team against LSU, Mrs. Michigan State, all these other ones. Cincinnati, they get blown, TCU, they get blown out. You know they're not going to do anything. You know they're not, you know they're not even going to come close. Putting in FSU just because it's like here. It's keep in mind, it's a television show. It's a it, show. They yeah. have to sell seats. They have to give you the best matchup. Think about it. You're yeah. not using your brain. Well, they deserve it. Okay, so do we deserve to watch them get the doors blown off them by 80 points? No. I think I think maybe the committee, this is their way of, of going, we're going to watch. We're going to show you. Because the past two years, they've done exactly what we've asked them to do. They have put in Cincinnati. They have put in TCU. Now, TCU deserved to be in there last year. But we also saw what happened when they went up against a, a legit opponent in Georgia. They got the doors blown off of them. Uh, Max the Duggan Dame looked team. like Ma Max marriage. Duggan looked like he like reverted to a to a a, a pee wee football player when he was going through all that. He you know? did so score. He did score. He did he score. Did, he scored. Everybody else was like, ah, uh. <laughs> Kendra Miller, ah, uh. Quentin Johnston. Like it was just like an endless supply of like, ooh. Like that, that's like another thing. Did, did, you, did you? Sure, FSU fantastic defense, but did we? Did do we really want that? And I just, I, I, I'm such a, I'm such a like a college football purist or like somebody who just doesn't want a crap matchup. I hate the people who are like, oh, I wish both teams could lose. Oh, that make my day. That's because it's a good matchup. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I think I think that the best point that you made throughout the course of this was accurately assessing Alabama's win over Georgia as the biggest win. It's the number one team in the nation. It might be the biggest win in the past two years. Am I wrong? I, I, Am I, I wrong don't to know say you, that? I don't think I don't know if you can say, can say Tennessee that. over Alabama last year was pretty good, but like Huge. this year, the biggest win undoubtedly was Alabama beating Georgia in the SEC championship game. Biggest game of the year. So I, I, anyway, another another great point that somebody said at work. This is a Michigan fan saying this, and we all know that the the committee and the NCAA doesn't want Michigan to win. He said, "I think that they put Michigan in so." or they put Alabama in so Michigan couldn't go anywhere. Does that not prove my point that Alabama deserved to be in because they're so good that you think your team isn't going to do well because the Alabama so good. I think another, uh, the other thing that feels a little weird, they probably, it's like three teams that should have been there. And then they pick the hottest team. Alabama has been the hottest down the stretch. I, 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 I get, I just, this is like, we're agreeing, and this makes sense. Maybe yeah. somebody else that's so invested in the other side of this argument that can't comprehend why we think this way. But I just think it's a it's a it's an embarrassment that the media has just chosen that other side. The only person that I know that said the other side is JP, and JP went on television today, and I was so happy he went on there and said that. I think, and this is the last point I have, and then I think we can move on to to yeah. greener pastures. Um, is 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 that I think that maybe in some way over the course of time we've been ingrained to just believe in, in I guess in 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 the numbers and stuff, and I think that the reason it feels so uncomfy is because they did the exact right thing. They did the exact. I right don't think thing. they've ever done. They took it a better. team with probably less impressive it is it's a less impressive record having one loss versus having no losses is less impressive but when you look at the body of work they have the biggest trenches. win of the year trenches yeah anyway the heisman finalists were just released about an hour ago uh and i think that we're probably both on the same page uh, on who will win this but the finalists 
Michael Penix Jr. from Washington, uh, Bo Nix, the grown man from Oregon, Marvin Harrison Jr. is the only non-quarterback to be a finalist for the Heisman in 2020. Marv. And then uh, uh, Jerome Davenport is the the other guy that's been uh, nominated as a Heisman finalist as well. Jane Daniels. Yeah, Jerome Davenport. <laughs> uh, Jane Daniels will be taking home the trophy. No further questions. Yeah, I mean, this is it's it's pretty much a layup. You Almost put a 5, confident 000. defense on LH for an uh, LSU squad, and you have yourselves the national champions. Yeah, yeah. If they could, if they could stop the anything. number one offense, the number one offense in college football, it's going to the it's going to the kid that plays yeah. quarterback. I'm sorry. I mean, you look at the side by sides too of like Burrow's twenty. Is it his his twenty eighteen campaign, twenty nineteen campaign? versus Daniel's campaign this year. It's eerily similar. Obviously there was, you know, I think that there was probably more uh for Burrow to be successful in that offense, but like Malik Neighbors is exactly what we thought he was going to be and more. Uh and the, the rest of the offense around him was was great too. Malik Neighbors is in my opinion is wide receiver 2 coming into the draft next year. Romo Dunze is a very close two but i think romo dunze is probably three but like mm -hmm. the collection of receivers we have coming out this year are absolutely ridiculous in the nfl draft harrison neighbors or dunze there's one more that i'm forgetting that's also why i'm not too worried about the bears getting uh maserati marv like i'll be maserati marv <laughs> <laughs> i dude i'd love uh why, why can't i think of his name now uh, Gus Johnson. I love Gus Johnson, especially. I know somebody that doesn't like him. Late season NFL games where you get Gus Johnson randomly on a call. Oh my God, they're great. I have a friend that thinks he's terrible at football. Oh, your friend is probably dumb. No, he's like, he's not prepared. He doesn't have good chemistry with Joe Klatt. Who's your friend? Uh, ben Wittenstein. I don't know who that is. Oh, okay. Sta Shout out to Stadium Bets. But here's the thing. I think I think Gus Johnson doesn't need chemistry necessarily with Clat because he's just the guy. He he we, I don't we have a know problem what we're tuning in for when we turn on a Gus Johnson broadcast. Ah! Ah, ah, ah! Nama, <laughs> there goes that man. Like we're 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 tuned in for the fucking one liners. You know what I mean? You and know, like you know everything how, like... feels like it's the biggest moment of the game. It's a punt on fourth and thirty seven, and he's like, "Here's the punter." <laughs> you know the D returned <laughs> and it's the it's it's the first quarter and there's still 13 minutes on the clock in the first quarter he's like he's like makes a cut five yards and he's out of bounds he's like <laughs> hey you know you know how like 90s rock it's just all yeah grunt with, grunt with Gus Johnson you could just go ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, up to the 45, and it's a huge catch, and it's a, like a gain of nine in the second quarter with seven minutes left. I like him. I don't have a problem. I, I, I dig him, too. Anyway, the Heisman, the Heisman, I think it's pretty clear Jaden Daniels is is going going to take that. But if He's you minus were to say, 1,600 to win it. Yeah, if you were to say that there was a dude able to challenge for Penix. the Heisman Penix. from this group, who would it be? It's it's got to be Penix. If 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 Bo Nix would have beaten Washington on Friday, I would say Bo Nix. I was I was saying Bo. Nix. I said on Stadium Bets, if if Oregon wins the Pac-12, Bo Nix should win the Heisman. Wow, but he lost. Does his record of games played at the college level at all weigh into uh, your your opinion on whether or not Bo Nix should 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 be Heisman? I mean, if you're not going to care how many starts he has and how there's no asterisks there, then no. <laughs> I still think it's – oh, him opting out of the bowl game against Liberty? Oh, but you don't want to shatter the record? I think I think he's focused on making generational wealth for his family. You know, yeah. on, on the on the topic, we briefly mentioned the draft, and we're like that's going to be the next big conversation 
I think, is trying to figure out who goes where. We're going to move into the, the college football offseason and into, you know, draft draft season, which is just around the corner. I think Jaden Daniels is going to be the Jalen Hurts of this draft. I think somebody's going to take him in the second round, late first, and they're going to absolutely hit the jackpot with this kid. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't, I don't know. He's really thin. That's that's gonna be one of the things scouts say. He's too thin. But you can beef why. him up if you feel the need to beef him up. Put a goddamn flak jacket on the motherfucker and send him out there. He'll be fine. This is gonna be a wild draft class. It's gonna be. There's so I, can we just get into the rankings? Because there's yeah. so many bad teams. The drop yeah. is the drop is drastic. So a couple of weeks ago, we put together a full list of uh, all 32 NFL teams put into five categories plus one. Um, and the categories, again, are good, actively trying, figuring things out, but it's complicated, actively trying, but not good at trying and offensive to football. And then there's there's also plus one, which is is just an asterisk because we didn't know how to properly rank one team. I don't necessarily know if it's worth me reading the entire list. Do it at the end. So write down, write a new list, and then when we're done, we'll read both lists. Sure. I can tell you right now, the most interesting placement of a team that we have in any of these. Can I guess what you're going to say? Yep. The Bucks. We in the good category, <laughs> right? So this is like our could compete for a conference championship, possible Super Bowl contender. And after week six had said that the good teams were Miami, Kansas City, Philly, San Francisco, Detroit, and Tampa Bay. <laughs> I, rem I remember we were like just discussing them being like well they could win their division and we're like you know what throw them in good <laughs> actively trying i you know, i don't i don't know what to do here if i should read them all just read them I, just give me a refresh give me a refresh. actively trying we did buffalo huh? baltimore houston vegas seattle atlanta new orleans vegas Vegas. Uh, you had Vegas there. I was willing to put them in offensive to football, and you said, no, 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 no. Bring them up. Figuring things out, but complicate it. The Jets, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Cincy, Dallas, Arizona. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Dallas and the Rams. The Rams are in there. Mm -hmm. uh, actively trying, but not good at trying. New England, Carolina, Minnesota, the Chargers, Washington, Arizona, and Green Bay. An offensive to football, Chicago, Tennessee, Denver, and the Giants. God, good for Denver. The asterisk here goes to Indianapolis, because what the fuck? Um, so, <laughs> it's our job gonna... now to re-rank these teams and find uh, uh, new pastures for them, uh, if wait. they so deserve new pastures. So, how would you like to do this? Would you like to do it by category and fill in the teams? Or go by team and put them in the category. We'll go by team. By team and put them in the category. Okay. So we have good. And we have actively trying. And we have all the other ones too. And the first one that we will start with here. We'll go to the AFC East. Where the uh -huh. division leading Dolphins are 9-3. and three, And coming off of a win this past week over the Washington Commandos, uh, this is a very good team. Yeah, you, even though they can't beat good teams, you just still have to put them in good. But you know what? <laughs> any, give, any, any given Sunday? Mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. There's a question mark on that now. Any, any, any given Sunday? Any? What if, it's it? over five, what if they're over 500? Nah, huh? I don't know, Jim. <laughs> um all right, actively trying is where I think we find the the six and six Buffalo Bills because they're trying. Damn it! Ah, uh, yeah, I was gonna say actively trying, but not good. But I'll give them that. I think that they're I think they're actively trying, and they are good. They just do dumb shit. 
they just need Dable back. <laughs> yes, and the Chiefs need uh, a competent wide receiver. Well, a competent wide receiver and a not Matt Nagy guy running the offense. Facts. Just have – I don't know. I, that's a topic for another day. All right. Uh, the Jets might be offensive to football. They might uh, have fallen uh, uh, all the way down to offensive to football. No, 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 no. This one, this one's got. Don't even write it down. They're the asterisks. I don't know that they are. Aaron Rodgers is making a comeback. Asterisks. No, because here's exactly what's going to happen with Aaron Rodgers. Oh, here we go. I hate Aaron Rodgers. Hate. Here's what's going to happen. I listen. I think it would be the most incredible medical feat if in under a hundred days, Aaron Rodgers returned to an NFL football field, but he's not gonna, the jets are four and eight. The jets are five games out of the AFC East lead. And uh, as of today are three games back of a wild card spot, two games back of a wild card spot. They got to catch up to the bills. They have to catch up to the bills. Aaron Rodgers is not going to come back. What's exactly going to happen is he is going to say, I had the opportunity to come back, but I didn't. He's going to make it seem like he was a hero and then not come back at all because that's just what he does for attention. I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer, probably a unanimous like first ballot Hall of Fame type of guy, but he is also an attention seeker and needs to be identified as such, he is not coming back until after this season. All right. Actively trying, but bad. Offensive to football. They started Tim Boyle. Yeah, and they're bringing back Zach Wilson. Why didn't they just go get Zach Wilson ain't coming back. Zach Wilson ain't walking through that door. Well, go ahead. Put offensive to football. <laughs> I'm not gonna listen, win. So listen, ahead. no, listen. You put Vegas in the actively trying category. Fine, you get time. one, I get one. I am deal, here. Dude. I am here yeah. to atone for some sins. God damn it! I don't know what I was thinking. I'll have to go back and listen. <laughs> well, they beat this one team this one time. You know, you know what? Put offensive in football. Put the Raiders. Put the Raiders, and then put the <laughs> Patriots. Put the Patriots because we already know they suck. Put the Patriots. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, offensive is the New York Jets. Put the Bears too, because I'm not talking anything else other than that. Sure, sure, sure. New England is in here. Chicago is in here. You said put Vegas in here just to just to atone for your own wrongdoings. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. We move on to the AFC North, where the Ravens are nine and three. Uh, we're 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 stagnant this past week. Actively trying. I think they're good. No, and Mark, no Mark Andrews. No, different story. Actively you think trying. so? Hundred percent. Also, put four hundred niners in good. <laughs> okay. We we don't need a discussion for that team. Come on. Okay. We don't we don't need to discuss okay. the best team in football. Not at all. The far and away the best team. All right. And then the Steelers. I would say offensive, it's complicated. Off- offensive to football. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? They fired Matt Canada. They've got some. You know, offensive, got... offensive to football. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, still offensive. You lost to the to the damn Cardinals. Um, the Browns are seven and five, and I would say this is an it's complicated team. Uh huh. Uh huh. Which I think puts them in the exact same category as last time. Yeah, figuring things out, but it's complicated. Uh, put it's complicated for Bengals. It's like, that's not their fault. Joe Burrow got hurt. Sure. But also, if I have to watch, and I do have to watch Jake Browning right now. The game just started. Um, yeah. They could be offensive to football. I knew you would say that, but the, but they're not. Like, that's not their fault. Tim Boyle. Tim Boyle is a choice. Okay, that's different. I agree with this then. Tim Boyle is a choice, and that is like we're moving on shit, from the Jets. The funniest shit from this past NFL weekend was watching was watching Watch. Tim Boyle 
You battled would. Desmond Ritter. Yeah, on 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 red zone. Yeah, they flip back and forth and whatever the hell. But there was a bet. I tweeted about it that said oh, yeah. who's going to have more passing yards, Tim Boyle or Desmond Ritter? The only thing I could do was cackle. Dude, who who had that most? I probably neither. I think they just were like, "This is a bad choice. We're gonna watch this one it out." It pushed. It pushed. <laughs> it pushed. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, the Jaguars at eight and three. Good. Really. Good. I see. I would put them in the actively trying category. Ryan, if they get a win tonight, I think they're number one in the AFC. Good. It just feels wrong, doesn't what's the, it? What's the record? What's the record? Eight and three. Same, same as the Chiefs. They get a win, they're above. Yeah, but I would say the Chiefs are actively trying too. Good. I don't know. All right, I'll settle here. Jacksonville is, is Jacksonville's good. We said the Bucks were good. Please do not fight with me. You, you don't rope me into this bullshit. Um, okay, last last time around, we had the Colts as the asterisk team. They've lost Anthony Richardson. Uh, Actively they've trying. Actively Gardner trying. Minshew, and Gardner Minshew looks good, dude. Balling. Of course, Gardner we knew Minshew he was looks ball. good, dude. Well, of course, we knew he was going to be balling. Get out of here. Oh, Titans. Complicated. Actually, yeah, we'll put complicated. Okay. All right. We could also do actively trying, but not good. Oh, no. Remember? Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, that one. That one. So the 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 Titans get a bump up. And then he, Indianapolis, where do we say it's complicated? No, no. Indianapolis is actively trying. Actively trying. Okay. They get a bump from the Asterix team. And Houston. Good. They're so good, dude. They're so good and... They're so They're good. good, and it's crazy that like C.J. Stroud is what he is. I watched it. I watched it yesterday. Good, and thanks for the under for hitting Denver. Thank you. Um. All right. Off to the AFC West, where the Chiefs are eight and four. Now, I know we just briefly talked about them, but where are we actually putting them? Actively trying. Yeah. I would say that's the place to put them. So it, it, but it's so, it's so weird. Is it, is it Matt Nagy? Why are they the way they are right now? Is it not having a quality guy to spread the field? I mean, who's their number one outside of Kels? Darius they Tony. A, they have a good run game with Pacheco. But... Rashi Rice. Uh, yeah, it's probably Rashi Rice. Right, like they don't they don't have a whole lot to throw the ball to. And I was just talking to somebody the other day, and I was like, I think that's exactly why they're as bad as they are because Kelsey's incredible, but Kelsey's not stretching the field. It makes you, it makes need, last year's run more remarkable. Kind of does, but it was also Go. it was also again the last year of enemy who kind of understood the growth and development of Mahomes and. Uh, Oh. I don't know, dude. I don't. I don't trust Matt Nagy with an offense worth a shit. I I can't. Anyway, I Kansas City's actively Nagy. trying. Uh huh. The Colts. Oh, I'm sorry. The <laughs> grown up Colts. The Broncos are, are six and six, and one of the hottest teams in the NFL. Actively trying. Yeah. Defense yeah. is good. Wilson's and, coming into his own with with Peyton. They're good, or they're they're actively trying. They're good. The Chargers are five and seven, and I'm Let's close. I'm. I was gonna say I'm close to offensive to football, and I. I'm glad that we get a chance to bring up the Chargers because Justin Herbert's got to move. He's got to go somewhere else. He has. To. Justin Herbert needs a, a change of scenery. Justin Herbert needs a, a change of coach. He needs something different because whatever's going on there, he can't handle it. Or uh, it's, Justin it's Fields or Justin him. Herbert straight up. Just give me mm. another Justin. Just give me another Justin. Mm. Give me another Justin. Oh. No. Moving on. Pass. Uh, the Raiders, we said, are offensive to football. 
Mm-hmm. It's really fun how last year we thought the AFC West was going to be this crazy dominant force oh. moving forward. And we have right now in the year 2023 of our Lord, two of the uh, four teams in that conference or division uh, in offensive to football as a category. On to the NFC. The Eagles are good. They had to play three games in 13 days. Unfair a little bit. Uh, They're overrated, but they're still good. Yeah, 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 they are. Uh, The Cowboys are also good. We can confidently say they're good. All right. You know I'm the first guy to step up and laugh at the Cowboys. They're good this year. Uh, The Giants. Asterix. (laughs) Actively trying, but not. Ooh. Let's table the Giants because this could be the perfect Asterix team. Yeah. Well, the Commanders. For, for... No, the Commanders might even be a better Asterix <laughs> the, team. The Commanders are the Asterix team because they're because Sam Howell's not bad. He's fighting for his life. Uh, we'll go Giants offensive to football. The the Commanders are the Asterix team, or the Rams are the Asterix team. Rams are actively trying, but not good. Okay, so the Giants, New York is just offensive to football in general. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the Lions are good. Mm, actively trying. No. Come on. What do you What do you got? Talk to me. Overrated. In what They're way? Good. You, can't, you good. can't say a division leader is overrated and then not have. Oh, oh, oh. Like the NFC North is really something to brag about. They're going to get got got by the Packers. Watch. All I'm going to say. They already got got by the Packers. They're going to get got got again. This is this is a disagreement. Vikings. I think poop. Vikings are poop. Acti- but I think they're still actively trying. Poop. Put okay. them in the poop category. Put them in the poop. poop category. Poop. Yep. We just created a category. Poop, Minnesota. But where does poop fall on this scale? Is it in between actively it's, trying it's, but not it's, good and offensive? It's, it's over to the right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got it. The Packers are actively trying and they might be good. I I, I mean, uh, we've been we said this earlier in the year. We knew that Jordan Love was going to be good. <sighs> I wasn't ready to buy into it, though. Oh, I felt it in my plums. <laughs> uh, the Bears are offensive to football. The fe- Can we just put the entire NFC South in offensive to football? Yes. The Panthers are definitely there. Yeah, no one's good. The, the Saints suck. I think maybe more accurately, New Orleans is actively trying but not good. Yeah, that's fair for them. The Buccaneers are an it's complicated they're not, team. They're, yes, they're not terrible, but they're not good. And the Falcons, who lead the division at six and six, I think I are actively about. trying, but not good. That's fair. That's fine. Is that the whole list? No, we still have the West, where San Francisco oh. is in good. The Rams are actively trying. Okay. Seahawks. Actively trying. I still think they're good. They've been without Kenneth Walker. And and, and the Cardinals, who I think we've already ranked as offensive, but also right now are actively trying, though they're not good at it. Get them out of here. Get them out of my face. Okay. So here we are with our, our week 13 listings. Of uh, of all 32 NFL teams. The good category grew, I think. We had one, two, three, four, five, six teams in there before. It's actually the exact same. We have six teams in there right now. <laughs> Miami, San Francisco, Jacksonville, Philly, Dallas. And I threw Detroit in there because fuck you. Um, Jacksonville, I think, took the biggest jump. Where did we have them? Jacksonville was figuring things out, but it's complicated, and they jumped all the way to good. Wow. Good for them. 
actively trying Buffalo, Baltimore, Indy, who gets the jump from the Asterix team. Kansas City, Denver jumps all the way up from offensive to Now, football. I want to interrupt and say the Asterix is no jump. It's just, hey, you're in. You were never down. <laughs> you, you are were never a team out. that plays football every Sunday. It's like, it's like here's, here's <clears throat> offensive. Here's Asterix. They went. <laughs> it's like, it, it's, it's a purgatory. Oh, a hundred percent. It's, it's the bench. Green Bay, the Rams. They're in the pup list. <clears throat> They're on the pup list. Also inactively trying the complicated team shrunk quite a bit because we had six of them. Now we have three, uh, as it's Cleveland, Cincy, Tampa Bay actively trying, but not good. Tennessee jumps up a, a, a rung. New Orleans in here as well. Atlanta in here. And the offensive to football category grew from four teams to many, many more than normal. The Jets. The NFL sucks. The Patriots. The Bears. The Raiders. The Steelers. The Chargers. The Giants. The Cardinals. And the Panthers. That's nine teams that we said are offensive to football. Minnesota is poop. And Washington is the Asterix team. I'm down. There you go. Re-ranked them just for you. That's my that's my favorite segment we've ever done. MLB Hot Stove uh, has the names of multiple, multiple MLB superstars uh, hanging in the balance. Uh, on the skillet, if you will. Shohei Otani is the biggest name amongst those. And uh, everybody's waiting for him to sign for the rest of the big dominoes to fall uh, because he's going to set the market, which is going to be absolutely nuts because the market is going to be set Upwards of six hundred million dollars for Shohei Otani. Uh, dear Shohei, we're gonna write Shohei a letter right now, everybody. Okay. Uh, never mind. Click your pens. Uh, my pens right here. It's enough. De enough dear Shohei, dear uh -huh. Shohei. Uh huh. This is the call, boys. Uh huh. Do the right thing. Uh huh. Please, dear God, do the right thing. Uh huh. This is the call, boys, once again. Dear uh -huh. God, I'm begging you. I'm on my knees crying tears of sadness. Do not go to the Atlanta Braves. Okay. Sincerely, the call, boys. Got that. Okay. And who's paying for postage? The call, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Nose goes. Um, <laughs> listen. Uh, the, the rumors surrounding Shohei right now are plentiful. There's people saying that the Cubs are the, the lead dog. There's people saying that the Dodgers are the lead dog. There's some saying that the Angels could offer something to Shohei that might make him want to stick around uh, in Anaheim. And as recently as today, the Atlanta Braves have jumped in and said, we might want to throw our hat in this circus as well. Um, and I think that much like Cub just said, has the MLB community together in hoping and wishing and praying that Shohei does not end up in the A. Um, I also, re we never got to talk about this. I really love that he said he will not sign with a team that leaks anything out. Yeah, that's. I thought that was kind of cool too. That's so cool. And it was like, okay, now teams can't put the eye emojis. It's like, ah, ah. <laughs> You have been banned from using the eye emojis. Uh, and uh, truthfully, truthfully uh, and this is this is hi this is cubs fan speaking i think he ends up on the north side of chicago because of uh um what's his name say yeah you do know that japanese players never play together right well no i didn't know that but also uh i think about i, I don't it. know Think about it. I, I think that it's I think that it's more of a, a, a aggression thing from from the Cubs and where they're trying to be right now. Uh, I guess who they're trying to be is is opening that window for themselves. They've got three years ahead of them that uh, that they need to capitalize on in terms of their roster makeup and where they're at. So this is the push the throttle down, figure some things out year for them. And there's no bigger player that's going to become available in the next three years than Shohei Otani. It he it, that player doesn't exist. Uh, Juan Soto will be a free agent maybe in two years, and at that point your window's next to shut. So you're either trading for Juan, or you're 
or you're probably not going to get him in, in your window. Shohei is the guy that you need. Um, and I think that he would be a huge piece to the puzzle for them, for anybody who's looking to win a world series, unless your name is the Atlanta, the, uh, the, uh, the Los Angeles angels, he would be a huge asset. I, uh, I don't care where he goes. I either way, I, I don't care where he goes outside of uh, LA and Atlanta, both LA teams. He and I think, else. and I know, I know that you won't say this, but I think I speak for the general populace of MLB fans when I say I do not want him in New York, uh, either in the Bronx or in Queens. Which would be worse, Queens, the Bronx, the Bronx, because the oh, best because you wouldn't be able baseball, to handle it. The best player in baseball would become a villain. Why would we want that? Which is awesome. Yeah. Is Aaron Judge a villain? Shut your mouth. No, but he hasn't lived long enough yet. He's 30. You either live, you either die a hero oh, girl. or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. And you know Aaron Judge about- is definitely in see yourself become the villain territory. We never talked about that ref that broke his leg. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Go ahead, Let's end Cub. With that. Let's end go, with that. Go ahead, Cub. Tell everybody with this auditory medium about the visual thing they need to see. Uh, if you haven't seen it, yesterday Alvin Kamara <laughs> got tackled out of bounds and fell onto a ref and broke his leg and had to get carted off. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a ref get injured. I've seen one like get concussed and have like a broken nose. I've never seen one clearly break his leg me either um and it's also like for any for any of those people who are watching the thing come at them get out the fucking way move (laughs) he was macking on a cheerleader dude leave him alone (laughs) where are you going after this (laughs) trying to go to the crispy waffle (laughs) (laughs) you trying to go to crispy cream He's like, you got a boyfriend? Is he coming back? <laughs> Can I have your number? <laughs> Can I have your number? Uh, uh, the other thing that we that we didn't get a chance to talk about during the NFL talk either is uh, Big Dom DeSandro, oh, the the leader of all Italian, the Italians, man. Making Come Italians on. look bad. You got the, what the hell are you doing? The DeVito family making us look good, and then you got this schmuck. What an embodiment of the city of Philadelphia, though. Am I right? What an embodiment of that city, of just so what's, big. What's with all the Italians in, on the Eagles team having the flag on their hats and stuff, dudes? Because well, if you if you've seen it on a couple of the um, the the players' helmets, they have their their oh. heritage flag on the back. They might not be like like Nigerian, but I've seen the Nigerian flag on the back of a bunch of helmets or Canadian or wherever. Like they. It's just part of the thing. So when they allowed that to happen, some of the coaches did the same thing, and they have just kept those hats and visors week over week and continue to support their proud Italian heritage. Hey. You know what I mean? Hey, hey, Bobby. So Dom, Dom DeSandro, first of all, again, the perfect example of what the city of Philadelphia would look like, a big, fat, strong Italian dude, balder than hell, uh, and he steps in in a situation where – he shouldn't step in. He's not a coach. He is the head of security and a special liaison <laughs> to the general manager, uh, but steps in and puts his hands on Dre Greenlaw. I'm not saying Dre Greenlaw is right for the way that he reacted, but he reacted the way some grown men would if another grown man were to touch him. And he threw a half-hearted punch at Dom DeSandro uh, or Big Dom, as people are calling him. Both of them were ejected from the game. Dre Greenlaw was jumping up and down like, what do you mean? And Dom DeSandro was escorted off by two other men. uh, And it was all a fever pitch of a moment inside of an NFL game. God, I love the Sopranos. Oh, my. Did you see somebody? uh, Oh, God. (sighs) Travis Etienne scored a touchdown. Oh, I got him in fantasy. High five. Did you? High five. And also, did you uh, did you take him first touchdown score? No, I almost did. Anyway, um, somebody <laughs> classic. 
somebody put the thing together with Soprano yelling at everybody, being like, he was he was an American hero. It's like I don't know. I think I think I probably ran out of steam. Dom DeSandro. Thanks for making all the Italians look good, my guy. Cub is checking his fantasy team, and we have Monday Night Football to go watch and sweat out, and so we shall together now depart from episode 154 of Love the you Call Podcast. Peace out. Stay sexy, my friends. Bye. Look up this morning. Get my... All I got is missed calls on my line, yeah, never 